Hello, this is Paula Tavanger and I'm here with the weekly blockchain brief. As you have already noticed, our main objective in this section is to follow the blockchain adoption and its penetration in the traditional asset classes. With that said, the next news coming from Wisdom Tree is a large step in the off-chain assets tokenization. Wisdom Tree is a $75 billion traditional asset manager and they will work to bring mainstream assets such as US Treasury bonds onto the blockchain. The regulators had approved Wisdom Tree's short-term treasury digital fund, which aims to track the selective one to three years treasury bond index. While the fund does not invest in crypto directly, the asset manager is betting that the offering is a first step towards bringing traditional financial assets, such as the, treasure, the US treasury bonds into the digital ecosystem. The fund is expected to launch through Wisdom Tree's prime digital wallet application, which is currently in beta testing. The Wisdom Tree Prime app is designed to allow users to save, spend and invest in crypto assets, blockchain enabled funds as well as tokenized versions of physical assets. Wisdom Tree CEO Jonathan Steinberg has said that he expects all financial assets to eventually move onto blockchain infrastructure and that the, he intends for the company to be a leader in that segment. Big news from Pantera Capital. Last week, the Token 2049 conference happened in Singapore and the Pantera's founder, Dan Moorhead, was one of the main speakers. During his speech, he announced that the company is planning to raise $1.25 billion for a second blockchain fund that would invest in equity in digital tokens. Pantera has already one very successful fund in the space, which launched in June 2021. The fund is an actively managed offering that invests into a combination of venture equity, early stage tokens and liquid tokens. It is for qualified purchasers only and the minimum investment size into it is $1 million. News from SWIFT, they are partnering with the crypto data provider Chainlink. SWIFT, which is the interbank messaging system that allows for cross-border payments, is working with Chainlink, which is a provider of price feeds and other data to blockchains. They are working on a cross-chain interoperability protocol in an initial proof of concept. The protocol will enable SWIFT messages to instruct on-chain token transfers, helping the interbank network to be able to communicate across all blockchain environments. This will help accelerate the adoption of distributed ledger technology and benefit various institutions across capital markets. And as usual, we leave the negative news for the end. The crypto lender Nexo got hit with enforcement actions from eight states in the US. State securities regulators in California and several other states took action against Nexo Group, which is the parent company of the lender Nexo, calling the company's earned interest product an unregistered security. That made it clear that crypto interest earning products will be called securities and are subject to investor protection under the law. Consequently, Nexo has voluntarily ceased the onboarding of new US clients for their earned interest products and also they stopped the product for new balances for existing clients. And we're moving to macro. One of the key factors we are watching here in terms of indicators of the Fed's interest rate policy is unemployment. And despite the last small drop in new payrolls, the number of jobless claims experienced a drop for another month, showing accelerating economy and consequently more inflation. Initial filings for unemployment claims fell last week to their lowest level in five months. The drop to 193,000 was below the estimate of 215,000. A separate report showed inflation running hotter than previously reported in the second quarter. This all caused VIX to hit fresh heights and the stock markets to tumble. And we are here with the VC section. Today, instead of exploring single deals, I wanted to take a deep dive into the latest Nansen report to examine the state of the VC market. The report is based on the last three months data and examines the activity of the VCs and their focus. Here you can see the top 10 most active funds and the number of their investments. The leaders are Spartan Group and Coinbase. Interestingly, their strategy is nothing alike. Coinbase is focusing all of its investments into DeFi data services and DEXs, while Spartan is still actively investing into NFTs and gaming. That shift is something I was highlighting for a while in our VC section. In Swissborg Ventures, we believe that in bear markets, the inefficiencies come more clearly to the surface. And the issue with the current market is that it still lacks 
decentralized infrastructure and the aggregation and centralized entities is what caused the initial fall. We see more and more of the VCs we partner up with to shift towards projects that have less of a potential price-wise short term but can become industry leading. Going to the report, it starts with the biggest deals that happened and since I already discussed most of them here, I won't go into detail. But we had SUI, which was a decentralized, horizontally scalable proof-of-stake blockchain. Mist and Labs developed SUI and raised $300 million at a $2 billion valuation for it. Another prominent deal was Aptos Labs building another layer one blockchain. They raised $150 million at $2 billion valuation. Both of the new blockchains are gaining traction by Aptos leading with more adoption that can be seen here. Nearly five times more apps were built on Aptos compared to SUI. In terms of funding categories, despite that the gaming and NFT index is at its lowest value, down almost 90% from last year, gaming still leads the funding rounds in terms of size. But this is self-explanatory since games require longer runways and studios are usually raising simultaneously to build multiple platforms. Other key takeaways are that investors are exploring the possibility of interoperable blockchains and have placed bets mostly on Cosmos as a key technology stack. Also another key takeaway is that there is emergence of new layer 1 blockchains. There is also a push from decentralized social network platforms and Web3 wallets which currently struggle to gain traction among users. The last part of the report examines the fund's activity in terms of outflow and a significant amount of unlocked tokens had been sold. This is understandable in the current market conditions with the VCs trying to de-risk their positions and the on-chain fund activity being available in my opinion is a huge benefit for the retail investor because it shows clearly the sentiment of the funds and can be used to time the market or at least some projects, exits and entries. Thank you so much for watching and I'm wishing you a great week ahead.